I had so much fun deconstructing a list of questions by Matt Slick of the Karm Institute, I just had to go back and find some more lists he had. Came across one for homosexuals and those who approve of it. So I figured, what the heck. I'll run through these, have some fun. Let's get to it. If heterosexual behavior produces offspring, and homosexual behavior does not, then how can it be that homosexuals are born that way, since their genetic tendencies would have died out long ago, through natural selection? If this is not the case, can you please explain the mechanism by which homosexual genes aid in survivability and are then passed on to descendants? Oh, that's actually a decent question, and one I've tried to figure out for myself. The best reason we have come up with is the gay uncle theory. Basically it says that if a couple has a child that breeds, their genes will be passed on through their grandchildren. If this same couple has another child that does not breed, say, because they're uninterested in the opposite sex, then they'll be around to help with the care and raising of their niece or nephew. So, being gay does not help in natural selection, but having gay children does. This has been confirmed, with studies showing that males with older brothers are more likely to be gay themselves. If sexual orientation is a genetic predisposition, and the homosexual community wants cultural and social support since, as they say, they are born that way, then shouldn't they also support homophobia, since it could be legitimately argued that homophobes are born with heterosexual orientation and pose a natural aversion to homosexuality? Uh, no. Sure, people are born heterosexual, but there's no recorded natural aversion to homosexuality. Additionally, the homophobes are trying to limit the rights of others, while the homosexual lobby is working to gain the same rights that everyone else has. And in this society, everyone, in theory, is supposed to have the same rights. If genetic predisposition is used as a support for saying that homosexual behavior is morally okay because they are born that way, then shouldn't pedophilia behavior also be considered morally okay since they claim they are born that way? Even if pedophilia was a genetic disposition, the difference is that their predilection harms others, namely the kids they want to f Even if you wanted to use the if they are born that way, it's okay for gays, so it should be okay for pedophiles argument. The difference is that a same-sex couple is an act between consenting adults, and a pedophiliac relationship is between an adult and a child who cannot consent. If pedophiles are morally wrong because they violate the wishes and will of the younger individuals, then at what age is a person too young to engage in sexual activity in accordance with his or her natural predisposition, i.e. being born that way? You're talking about the age of consent. This varies from place to place, but the standard consent is around 16 or 18. There are various gray areas where the partners are close in age, but roughly speaking, late teens is the age of consent. In light of being born with a sexual orientation, like homosexuality, frauderism, the act of deriving sexual pleasure from intentionally rubbing against and or touching a non-consenting person, voyeurism, the act of deriving sexual pleasure from watching another person undress and or participate in sexual activity, if pedophiles are morally wrong because they are acting out their sexual orientation upon minors who are not mature enough to consent, then what do you do when minors become mature enough to consent and also claim they are born wanting a sexual relationship with an older person? Well, to start with frauderism, honestly I've never heard that term before, learned something new today, and voyeurism are not orientations, but sexual acts, but nice try trying to sneak that one in there. Anyway, back to your original question. Are you asking what happens when a minor is old enough to consent? That means they are simply old enough to make the decision on who they want to sleep with themselves. Yes, in some cases that may seem a little creepy, like an 18 year old and a 60 year old. But unless one partner is forcing or coercing the other, that's their decision. If what is sexually permissible is what is based on consent, then what do you do with younger than 18 adolescents who consent to having sex with much older people? Is that okay? If the person is not past the age of consent, then they can't consent to having sex. That kind of goes without saying. So the responsibility falls on the older of the two, and I believe the term for that is statutory rape. From where do homosexuals get their moral standard by which they can judge what is sexually right and wrong? From the same place that everyone gets their moral standards. They personally decide on their own what is right and wrong, and if those decisions go against what society deems appropriate, they are often held in check. I judge my standards by what actions will harm people and refrain from them, and if harm has to be done, what action will harm people the least. If homosexuals derive their standard of morality from society, then what justifies the idea that society is the proper place to obtain a standard of morality? No, people don't just get their morals from society, but society gets its morals from the population. People decide what is moral on their own, and the most popular morals are adopted by society. Often, people use others in society to craft their own morals. Now, if a person is in the minority as to what society deems appropriate, they will either suppress their urges, try to get society to change its views, or try to get away with those urges without being caught. If homosexuals derive their standard of morality from society, then what society has the right moral system if it contradicts another? As I've said before, in the end, people don't just get their morals from society, 
But what makes one society right? Nothing. Moral behavior is a subjective thing, not an objective one that can be measured against some final arbiter of morality. If homosexuals derive their standard of morality from society, then are the morals derived from society obligatory to all members of society? As I have said several times, people don't get their morals from society. While others around them can help shape their morals, everyone decides on their own what is moral or not. People whose morals diverge from societal norm can either try to change society's views, conform to them, or try not to get caught when they break them. If homosexuals derive their standard of morality from society, then what gives them the moral right to change society's morals when the majority condemn homosexuality as morally wrong? If people think that their standards of morality are better than society's, then they can attempt to change the majority's views. This is pretty much what happened with the homosexual community. They were able to change society's views so they were able to become more accepted compared to the past. Hell, that's what the civil rights movement was all about, convincing society that their views on race were wrong. If homosexuals derive their standard of morality from themselves, then do they have the right to judge the morals of anyone else, including those who disagree with them? Of course, people judge others all the time. I went for pizza the other day, and the person ahead of me ordered a vegetarian Hawaiian, mushrooms and pineapple, Gee, I judged them to have terrible taste. That being said, while I judged them to have a messed up palate, I did not have any right to smack the pizza out of their hands and say they were wrong for ordering it. That order was their decision, and as long as it didn't hurt anybody else, that was their right to make that decision. The idea of saying we should deprive people of rights that harm no one, like the choice of topping because I don't like it, is frankly insane. If homosexuals derive their standard of morality from themselves, then do they have the right to condemn those who they label homophobes when they are just expressing their personal moral preference? The homophobes are doing what they can to limit the rights of people just because they don't like who they are. Even if you think it's morally reprehensible that two people have the audacity to love each other, you have no right to set up society so they are denied what everyone else is entitled to, including security. If homosexuals say that homophobes are wrong because they want to restrict homosexuals' rights and impose their values on them, then what gives homosexuals the right to impose their sexual values on others? They aren't. The homosexual lobby is not trying to force anyone to enjoy or even have any kind of gay sex. All they want are the same rights as everyone else. You are still allowed to hate them as much as you want, you just can't harm them. If homosexuals derive their standard of morality from themselves, then do they have the right to try to change society to suit their own moral preferences? Everyone has the right to try to change society. If somebody feels they are being mistreated by society, they have every right to try to change that society so they are accepted. That said, the homophobes out there that are saying they are being abused by having to serve people, they are not being forced to do their jobs. They can quit at any time, but they are required to treat everyone equally. If homosexuals derive their standard of morality from themselves, and they also believe that they have the right to try to change society to suit their own moral preferences, then how is that not arrogant? Arrogance is thinking you are better than everyone else. All the homosexual lobby is looking for are the same rights that everyone else has. So, no, that's not arrogant. It's in fact the opposite of arrogant, thinking you should be treated the same as the rest of society. If civil rights should be granted to homosexuals because of their sexual orientation, i.e. sexual behavior, then shouldn't equal civil rights be granted those of alternate sexual orientations, such as pedophilia, incest, voyeurism, expositionism, sadism, fetishes, Fraudism, necrophilia, autoerotic asphyxiation, etc. If not, why not? Alright, let's go down the list. Pedophilia, that harms children because they can't give consent, so it should not be granted equal rights. Incest, there's a very real chance of genetic harm, so no, it shouldn't be given equal rights. Voyeurism, this harms people by having their privacy violated, so it should not be granted equal rights. Exhibitionism, this harms people by exposing themselves to those who may not want to see someone else's privates so it should not be granted equal rights. Sadism. As long as both parties consent to the sadistic acts, then there is no reason to deny them these rights. Fetishes. As long as they don't harm anyone else outside of a consensual fashion, there is no reason to deny them these rights. Frauderism. It is by definition an act that denies consent, so it harms people and should not be granted equal rights. Necrophilia. The deceased cannot give consent, so it should not be granted equal rights. Autoerotic asphyxiation. This is actually quite dangerous, but I'm torn. I believe people should have the right to do what they want, but the dangers involved mean some sort of protection or at least education should be involved, etc. I've never even heard of that until today, so I can't make a call on it. Like frauderism, I'm learning a lot. What's etc? and uh, is it enjoyable? I'm curious now. Uh, if anyone knows, let me know how I can do it and uh, how many people I'll need.
if civil rights should be granted to homosexuals based solely on their sexual orientation, behavior, then shouldn't equal civil rights also be granted heterosexuals based specifically on their sexual orientation, behavior? If not, why not? No rights are being given based on sexual orientation. They are being given by the understanding that if some people are given rights, then all people should be given rights. So, whatever rights homosexuals have, heterosexuals should have the same rights. But oddly enough, I can't think of one right that homosexuals have that heterosexuals are denied and are fighting for. If equal civil rights should not be granted to people of alternate sexual orientations, excluding homosexual behavior, then what is it about homosexuality that deserves special status protection where other sexual behaviors do not? All people should be given equal rights. But many of these alternate sexual behaviors that you brought up earlier cause harm to others. That's why most of them do not have protection. Oh, and uh, homosexuality does not deserve special status protections. Homosexuals deserve equal status protections. If homosexuals are granted privileges due to civil unions and domestic partnerships, shouldn't the same be offered to heterosexuals? Yes. That's where there should not be special civil unions and domestic partnerships in lieu of marriage. Every couple should have the same rights. But if homosexuals are able to have a civil union, then so should heterosexuals. And if any straight couple applies for one in an area where a gay couple can, they should be awarded that. Shouldn't an equal amount of sexual orientation promotion be offered to people of alternate sexual orientations, i.e. pedophilia, incest, necrophilia, autoerotic asphyxiation, such as they are promoted in parades, schools, movies, sitcoms, magazines, schools, etc.? If not, why not? As I said before, these actions, not orientations, cause harm to others, which is why they are not promoted. Would you, if you are pro-homosexual in practice and or ideology, promote and support heterosexual parades, heterosexual-oriented TV, and other overt heterosexual appreciation promotions in school classrooms, the same as is occurring with homosexuality? If not, why not? Yes, if societies hit the point where heterosexuals have been denied equal rights and have had to fight for those rights, then yes, I can see them promoting the pride they have in overcoming those obstacles. However, I have not seen any kind of discrimination that heterosexuals have had to overcome yet, much less one that the homosexual population has had to, so it may be a long time coming before there are any heterosexual pride parades. If being intolerant of homosexuality is somehow wrong, then why are the homosexuals not wrong when they express their intolerance of those who disprove of homosexuality? Because those who are intolerant of homosexuality are doing their best to deny rights to people. Homosexuals and their allies are intolerant of people trying to deny them rights. That is the major difference between your two points. Isn't it hypocritical to say that homosexuals want tolerance for everyone, but at the same time they practice intolerance of those who disagree with their behavior? I love arguments like this. You're intolerant because you won't let me discriminate against you. It'd be like stabbing somebody in the face and then complaining that they caused your knife to get blood on it. Anyway, it's not hypocritical because they are intolerant of those who would deny them rights that the rest of the population enjoys. The homophobic lobby is trying to take rights away from them, and I think anyone would be intolerant from those who are trying to take their rights away. If homosexuals want tolerance, then when they try to change the rest of society's views about homosexuality, aren't they demonstrating their intolerance of the majority position? Again with the, you're being intolerant by denying me my ability to take away your rights argument. Changing people's views so that everyone is afforded equal rights is in no way comparable to complain that you don't get to discriminate anymore. If you affirm that it is okay for homosexuals to show their intolerance for the majority view against homosexuality by trying to change the rest of society's views to conform to their own, then shouldn't it be okay for the majority to try to change the moral view of homosexuals to have them conform to the majority? Sure if you can show a reason why they should conform to the majority. As it is, there is no reason why a person's orientation is anybody's business except their own, and there is no reason to deny them any rights because of it. So, that's my latest response. Let me know what you think. And if you come across any more lists, videos, or articles you think I would enjoy taking apart, please send the links my way.